डाउट्स में अटकते सब्जेक्ट्स में लटकते कब तक हम रहेंगे सर पटकते अब वेदांत तू देगा प्रॉब्लम से छुटकारा हाय के समझ हाय आएगा तो मजा आएगा मजा आएगा तो समझ आएगा बढ़िया टीचर्स प्रॉब्लम्स चुटकी में सुलझाएंगे डाउट सारी जिंदगी से आज आई गॉट योर डाउट दिस इज योर आंसर समझ आएगा तो मजा आएगा मजा आएगा Vedantu learn live online to attend a free live class download the app now Hey guys welcome back this is me your suri sir and you are watching me on Vedantu's J channel So tell me guys are you a J aspirant if yes then i'm sure that you will be going to appear for j examination either in the month of january 2020 or in the month of april 2020 or maybe in the coming years later on in your future yes or no well guys if you are a j aspirant then yes this video is going to be immensely helpful for you how about this guys if i tell you that you can secure one third of your marks in a subject in j in just first 10 to 12 minutes how awesome would that be yes or no yes i am not kidding it is possible you can score one third of your marks in a subject in j in your first 10 to 12 minutes and i am going to tell you how is that possible are you all ready for that i'm sure you are okay guys so we are going to go ahead and what i call this technique is a very interesting thing to know well we call this technique as you can see it on the screen we call it emd method what does emd stand here for well it's basically easy medium and difficult so why am i calling it that you have to listen to me very carefully from now onwards well guys as soon as you receive the paper you have to dedicate initial 10 to 12 minutes of a given subject in just analyzing the entire paper go through the entire paper and marking the entire paper with each and every question as which of these is easy medium or difficult as per you not as per the general perception or conception how you feel about that question in first 10 minutes you have to do that and once you are done with that after that if you start solving the paper you would have the entire birds eye view birds eye view over the entire paper and then you will be able to solve the questions obviously which are easy for you first after that you'll be going for what you'll be going for the mediocre level of questions for you and then if time permits then you will be going for the difficult questions well usually guys whenever we appear for exams like j we go by our own understanding and our own affinity towards all the three subjects if we find which is usually the convention most of the people find chemistry the most scoring after that either physics or maths comes so say if you are starting off with chemistry you will obviously if you are considering it to be the most scoring one you will try to give it the least amount of time after that the next subject that you consider is relatively easier for you is what you will be giving your time to and you will try to save maximum amount of time for the subject which you find difficult so i'm assuming that uh, you're going to give 45 minutes to chemistry around 55 minutes to physics and an hour to mathematics so that you are still spared with around 25 to 30 minutes to do the revision as in which all questions you have solved which have you not solved you want to see whether you have marked the questions correctly or not and so on and so forth well guys whenever you are reaching to a particular say subject say you reach to physics i'm going to take the example of physics here you're going to spare first 10 minutes in just going to the process that i'm going to tell you it's not that you will be just going in the examination final examination and applying this rather i will recommend if you like the method that i'm going to tell you today try applying that in all the mock test or all the test that you are going to appear for in during your preparations before you appear for the actual j examinations okay guys so what exactly emd method is we are clear about that we are going to mark the questions as easy mediocre and difficult and after that we will solve all the paper questions okay but how does it work let's go through that well what you see here on the screen i'll go through all the individual points and they will actually matter yes it's the first point which is says that the entire method works on certain principles 
The first point says that your affinity to a topic and appearance of the questions from those topic is probabilistic. Yes, obviously some luck factor is always there. There are topics which you like and if you like those topics and the questions come from that particular chapter, then obviously your confidence level goes high and your probability of scoring more increases. Works vice versa as well, but let's be very optimistic and let's hope that all the topics which we are very, very, very fond of, maximum number of questions are going to come from that. Okay, guys. Now, where it starts getting practical. This was basically something luck based, probabilistic. Your gut feeling is very important when you are selecting the question, when you are just scanning the paper, you are trying, you will not be able to read the questions completely. You will only be able to scan through the paper. So that is why listen to all the points very carefully. As the second point says that your gut feeling matters. Yes, your gut feeling matters, guys. Why your gut feeling matters is because in the first go when you are reading, say around 25 questions are going to be this year, Earlier till uh, 2019, 30 questions were there. So 30 questions in 10 minutes is a very, 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 very fast process. So in that case, obviously, my gut feeling about a question when I look at it is going to help me call, take a call, whether it is easy, mediocre or difficult. Yes. Yeah. Next point says that your reading and your analyzing sp speed are crucial. Well, obviously, if you can read very fast, that is basically going to come by practice only when you have solved many questions during your preparation years you will just be able to go through the question read the important parts of the question in while you are scanning it you will be able to get a judgment about the difficulty level of the question and that is why your reading and then based upon your reading your analyzing skill is very 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 crucial guys and yes whenever there are going to be diagrams in the question they'll be extra helpful why? Because it helps you directly get to the point that which chapter this particular question belongs to. Yes or no? Say if you see a circuit diagram, you know that the question is from current electricity and you can directly connect with your thought whether I am good at current electricity or not. If you see a block and a triangular wedge, you get the idea that the question is from mechanics, from laws of motion. And if you are good at it in general, then you will obviously be marking it either easy or mediocre. But say for me, like I consider optics as one of the most challenging topics. But then if I see any lens or a complicated diagram from optics, then the first thought comes that do I scan it properly or do I say that it is difficult? Okay, guys. So yes, the paper which I am going to discuss today uh, in terms of easy, mediocre and difficult uh, Topics wise, uh, it's going to be from J 2019, the paper which was held on 9th of January and that too in the morning shift, assuming that there are topics which I also consider easy, usually which I am very good at. And then there are topics which I also find challenging. Yes, consider me as one of you and I'm going to deal with this paper. Obviously, we are not solving the paper. We are just scanning it for the first 10 minutes to 12 minutes of the paper to mark the each and every single question as easy, mediocre and difficult. Remember the name of the method guys, it is EMD method. So what I believe in general guys, I believe that mechanics is usually very easily doable because it does not require much of theory, it requires only application. After that, I find electrodynamics also very scoring because usually there are formulas which if you remember, you'll be able to apply them to get the formulas application and solution done. Then comes for me is thermodynamics. The entire thermodynamics is based upon very simple concepts as well as very few number of formulas. So you can apply them as well. There are few parts which are sometimes tricky as well. Okay. After that comes modern physics. In modern physics also, uh, there are parts like uh, atomic structure and photoelectric effect, nuclear physics, which I find relatively very scoring. But when it comes to semiconductor devices, apart from the logic gates, I consider that uh, the other devices like transistor, diode and amplifier, they are relatively tricky because uh, that requires a little bit of more reading, in-depth reading of all the questions. Okay, guys. And the one, as I already have confessed, yes, optics is something which if I'm lucky, I'll be able to crack a question. Else, I will put it mostly in mediocre or difficult zone for myself. Guys, again, repeating, I'm just trying to give you a framework here. Do not take it as a thumb rule. I'm just giving you a general idea how to keep the difficulty level of the topics and the units in your mind. Okay, guys. So without wasting any further time, what I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to pick my phone. 
I'm going to uh, start the stopwatch in my phone and let's see if we are able to mark all the questions as e easy, me mediocre and difficult or not. Well, <clears throat> what, we, what we are going to do here from here onwards, the first slide onwards you will be seeing all the questions one by one obviously as you are going to see on the computer screen when you appear for JE main but I have already marked them easy mediocre and difficult so that by the end we will be able to count the number of questions which are easy the number of questions which are mediocre and the number of questions which are difficult okay guys so the questions are already marked so I am giving you that uh, benefit of doubt that it will take at least 30 more seconds to mark each or every one of them 30 seconds to one more minute you can take okay guys so here i have my stopwatch we are moving on to the first question i'll be reading it not the entire question i'll be trying to get the gist of all the questions especially if diagrams are there i'll take my call whether that question is doable or not i'll try to explain also in for in this entire process it may so happen that I might shoot the time more than 10 minutes, but then remember, I'll be also trying to explain you how am I marking them as easy, mediocre and difficult. But when I'll be doing the mental uh, process of understanding whether the question is EMD, then obviously I'll not be taking that much amount of time. So probably I'm going to take two to three minutes additional. You will, when you will do this, you will be able to save that much amount of time okay guys so let's start without wasting any further time here let's go ahead and see how the j 2019 paper was in general how many questions were easy mediocre and difficult and i'll give you towards the end a very 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 generic analysis of how the paper is actually set with respect to easy mediocre and difficult okay guys so here we go starting off with the stopwatch and my stopwatch starts along with the question coming on the screen Okay guys, so I've started the stopwatch and yes, this is the very first question which looks like from uh, the magnetic effect of electric currents and the question wants us to find out the magnetic field at this point. We know it, we can find out by mu naught i upon 2r, theta upon 2 pi, so that's why something which you can solve but not like in the fingertips, so that's why I'm marking it as mediocre. Moving on, next question, as you can see diagram, it's a PV diagram, that means it is from thermodynamics. The question is asking us to find out the heat flow in the process of path A, D, B. So in general, first law of thermodynamics is easily applicable. So you'll be able to solve it by finding the value of internal energy from one of the processes. That's why I'm marking this question, guys, as easy. Moving on, the next question. What you see here is uh, electric field is given and electromagnetic wave is the name of the chapter. And electric field is given, magnetic field is to be found. We know that uh, the Light is basically having a magnitude which is equal to E by B. Using that formula, you'll be able to solve it. That's why I'm marking it as easy. Moving on, the next question is basically from the chapter of waves. We know that intensity maximum is under root of I1 plus under root of I2 whole square. My minimum is under root I1 minus under root I2 whole square. So their values are being given. You have to find out the intensities ratio. So you can easily do that formula, apply that and solve it. That's why I marked it as easy again. Okay. Now see this, this question is actually from uh, center of mass and collision. We have to find out how much angle this AB is making with theta. So when you are looking at the diagram, yes, you think that yes, some sort of balancing has to happen. The net torque will become zero and that point has to be found with respect to center of mass. So it will require a lot of geometric understanding and according to me, it will take time. That's why I'm marking it as difficult. Moving on, question from uh, Thermodynamics again, in fact, KTG, we have to find out the ratio of RMS speed, which is under root of 3RT by M. All the informations similarly looks like appear, uh, sorry, so, uh, looks like they are given. So that's why you'll be able to solve this one just by applying the formula, marking it as easy again. Now, you see this, uh, see this, that this is basically a current electricity question. And if I read it quickly, it says that we have to find out the value in this branch. So in such questions, when battery is not given, usually you go by a nodal analysis method and you'll be able to solve it, but not marking it, it as very easy. But because it is doable, that's why marking it medi mediocre. Okay, guys, very easily visible. It's the carbon resistor. And by using the color code method, you'll have to find out the value of the tolerance, which you can easily do. Okay, so in that case, you'll be able to solve this question very easily. Also be able to find out the value of uh, the resistance by using BB, Roy, Great Britain, very good wife, that method of remembering the color codes. So marking it easy again. After that, what you see here, guys, is a bar magnet and you have to 
that bar magnet is placed in a solenoid solenoid has a magnetic field of b equal to mu naught ni we have to find out the coercivity of the bar magnet coercivity is b by mu naught so all the information is seemingly appear appear to be given so you'll be able to find out b by mu naught so that's why marking it as easy again moving on now see that young's modulus has to be found and temperature also is visible we know that young's modulus is stress upon strain strain because of thermal stress can be found as alpha delta t uh, options are also helpful to judge that so you'll be able to solve this also so marking it as easy again next one because spring and block are available so all you have to do is basically think about shm a constant force is acting maximum speed is to be found which is at the mean position so i think by doing some calculations you'll be able to solve it that's why marking it as mediocre okay guys so far one difficult question okay now this question three charges one of them in equilibrium and we have to find out the value of q to keep the entire system in equilibrium and usually we have done so many questions like that jackpot question that's why it is easy okay guys moving on now the next one in this case we have a conducting loop which has charge over it we have to find out uh, the net charge flowing through the loop if the magnetic field is this much and in this case i think you will be applying the law uh, faraday's law of electromagnetic induction we have to find out the value of uh, electromagnetic induction says that electromagnetic uh, emf emf is equal to rate of change of flux b is given uh, area is given so looks like it's going to be solved from that so that's why marking it as m okay guys yeah so this is done moving on to this one this has a torsional pendulum involved so again going by the shm method you will have to find out the value of uh, you have to find out the tension it in it the tension in the string is to be found during the rotation happening so not considering it very easy but not very difficult marking it as m because the question is from mechanics now the next one is a copper wire its length is increased percentage change in the electrical resistance so resistance is rho l by a length is changed so you can find out the change in area keeping the volume constant easily doable that's why marking it as e now this is a capacitance question with a dielectric and not placed very uniformly so it will require some integration to be done so that's why another difficult level of question because whenever integration is involved usually question gets difficult or rather lengthy okay guys now this one has a, a semiconductor whose resistivity is to be found so by using that ohm's law with respect to the current density j equal to j which is related to sigma and e that formula you will be using here to find out the value of the resistivity of the semiconductor so one upon conductivity you can find okay so marking it as mediocre next one you have a uh, planet revolving around sun and its angular momentum is given aerial velocity is to be found usually kepler's law of planetary motion come in our mind if you know this it is actually easy but if you do not know this you'll go with the derivation that's why it will require some time so that's why marking it as mediocre now what you see here not even reading the question what you see that it's basically a block placed on the surface and it is basically the minimum value of this force required to keep the block stationary that means question is from laws of motion will be able to do it but not so fast that's why mediocre level of question okay now what in this question you have the diagram which says that temperature difference is being maintained and the heat current is flowing so this is basically heat transfer you can convert this into the electrical circuit situation and all you have to do is to find out the temperature difference in the steady state so you can convert this into resistance and easily able to solve it like a normal current electricity problem so will take some time but not very difficult that's why marking it as mediocre okay guys next one you have a car in which a ball is suspended by a thread and because of the acceleration of the vehicle there are waves created in it and because of the acceleration of the vehicle you have to find out the, the value of acceleration itself in terms of g so will require certain calculations could be mediocre for some people but marking it as difficult because it may require more of thinking okay guys fine next one uh, radioactive sample is given half life looks like to be found so first order kinetics is to be used dn by dt is equal to lambda times n and you'll be able to calculate the half life not easy but marking it as mediocre optics question guys so in this question we have to find out that what is the minimum value of mu in this case yes looks like something where i'll have to put efforts that's why marking it as difficult from my perspective 
Okay, now this one has an infinitely current carrying loop and a circular current carrying loop. We have to find out that a loop applies a force on F here. So not much of information given and when less information is given, you require to work much more on that. So that's why I'm marking it as difficult. Now this one uh, looks like has question from the modern physics will require photoelectric equation because work, work function is to be found. We know the photoelectric equation, so marking it as M. Next one. Kinematics question again, velocity is given, equation of the path is to be found, so you can very easily do it by differentiating x and y, okay, so marking it as easy. Next one says that there is a lens involved to sh get a sharp image, so looks like a mirror form uh, lens formula will be used, so will be I will also be able to do it, marking it as mediocre. Moving on, a uniformly charged ring, electric field on the axis has largest magnitude, Distance h, we know that electric field because of ring can be easily found. We know that formula usually. So value of h where the electric field becomes maximum. Most of the people already know this. It is r by root 2. So you can mark it as easy. Now you have three blocks. Collision looks like is involved. So because of the perfectly inelastic collision, it will be doable but will not be very fast. That's why marking it as mediocre. And this one guys, the drift speed is there. So Yes, you have to find out the value of the drift speed, i equal to any AVD, we'll be able to directly apply that and solve this, all the 30 questions done, pausing this thing. That's how fast we go, guys. Now, on the screen, on my cell phone, with the explanation that I gave you people along with reading the questions, it says 9 minutes and 25 seconds, as I promised you. That, yes, this is doable, guys, and doable in within 10 minutes so if you take say a little bit more of time then also you will be able to finish this in 12 minutes now after that once you are done doing this thing all we have to see is the analysis of how many questions we have seen which are easy mediocre or difficult okay guys so let's see this if you will go through this entire paper do the revision i'll be putting this uh, ppt in the comment and description below so the description will have the ppt here so you can go through the entire ppt along with the marking as easy mediocre and difficult already being present there for your reference so when you will take a count here guys you will find that the number of easy questions in this paper obviously this had 30 questions because this was 2019 paper so easy questions count is 12 when you will go through this total 12 easy questions are here okay if i speak about the total count of mediocre questions you'll find 30 questions of that count so the remaining one are difficult which are five so what did i say the topic or the title of this video says that you can score 40 plus in the first 10 minutes you can secure that much marks so just multiply this by four this is 48 so even if you reduce the easy questions by two, still you will still be able to cross that mark of 40 in securing that in first 10 minutes, guys. Amazing or not? Yeah. Multiply this by four, you get 52 marks. Multiply this by four, this is 20 marks weightage. And this is very, very, very much is going to be the case with almost any paper of J. If you pick any paper from the last 10 to 15 or 20 years, you will see that J or in general any examination sets the paper in such a way that close to 30 to 35 percent of the questions are basically from the easy zone roughly 40 to 45 percent questions are from the mediocre zone and 10 to 15 percent are the only questions which are the most rank deciding questions which are from the difficult zone so if i say that you could crack these 12 questions by yourself easily and if you could manage say eight questions out of mediocre not even touching the difficult questions so 12 plus 8 20 questions out of 30 were very easily doable and you will not even take the amount of time which i said you will put for physics say 55 minutes you'll be able to do this within 45 minutes yeah even by doing this 10 minutes analysis of the paper scanning of the paper and by scoring, by actually solving 20 questions, multiply that by 4, you will be able to score 80 marks out of 120 
in physics itself which is usually a very difficult scenario for most of the students people consider physics is not that scoring but yes physics can also become scoring and if you apply the same method in chemistry as well as in mathematics see how awesome your result can get if you can score 80 in physics you can easily score 90 to 100 in chemistry and say worst case scenario you find mathematics difficult then not 80 but at least 60 you'll be able to score 50 percent in mathematics also you'll be able to score just imagine what your score will be it will be 250 so with that 250 score just imagine what kind of rank you can easily get means what you are securing at least your nits and some of the iits as well so guys if you found this method interesting if you found it practically applicable then from today onwards after watching this video any paper that you appear for as a mock test try to dedicate first 10 minutes of each subject to just scan the paper take a sheet of paper because mostly you'll be appearing for all the examinations on a computer screen so keep a sheet of paper with you before paper starts mark the question numbers 1 to 25 for all physics chemistry and maths and say you are solving physics or you're going to appear for a physics paper now so first when you're scanning the paper on the screen go through each and every question on the paper start writing it as e m or d and after you are done writing all of that Go to all the questions with the numbering which you have marked as easy first. Secure them in the first 10 plus 10 minutes. First 10 minutes for the scanning. Next 10 to 15 minutes only for your mediocre question. You will still be left with more than half time which you dedicated to that subject. How awesome would that be? Yes or no? Well guys, I hope that you guys like the method and if you like the method i'm sure you are going to apply it in your real life in all the upcoming examinations before je and if it works for you try this in your actual je examination because all these tricks we are basically sharing with you at vedantu so that your efforts actually exponentially bring results to you only not just putting hard work it's basically called the smart work guys okay so if you are going to apply this, if you are trying this method and solving the papers, watch this video and put your scores and how you are feeling about the method, how you are finding this method in the comment box which is there below and I'll get to know that how much it is helping you and I'll try to help you with any situation that you are facing. I'll try to read all the possible comments which you put there and I'll tell you how else can you improve and if there are any other queries which are related to the method, I would like to know that also. Put that in the comment box guys and if you are enjoying being with us at Vedantu, then yes, all the best for the JE examinations for people who are going to appear in the month of January. On that note, I'll be taking your leave. If you're liking being with us, guys, then like the channel, tell your friends and subscribe to the channel if you have already not. Okay, guys, so I'll be coming back with more such sessions, more such videos to help you guys improve your performance in exams like JE or NEET. Till then, keep studying, keep applying this method and I'll see you again, guys. Bye-bye. Take care.